Hi, this is the truth of love and this is Clutch. Today's topic is attachment visually reviewed. Now, the reason I put this together has to do with a couple of things, but the first thing is people on the Discord ask me how different attachment styles impact one another. In fact, how is it that a secure and what kind of impact do they have on someone who's fearful, for example? And I did my best to describe this um, verbally. And what I found was it was very hard for people to grasp the idea of what I was talking about. And in the spare of the moment thing, I decided to share my screen and pull out MS Paint and gave a visual representation. And everyone on the Discord understood it right away. And what I came to realize was this is something that I've never done on one of my videos and I feel that it would be beneficial for the rest of you if you visually can see what kind of impact different attachment styles have on another, particularly when it comes to things such as emotional stability. So the main thing I wanted to talk about is I wanted to talk about how I'm breaking down attachment styles. And this is an overgeneralization, but I still wanted to give you an standard idea of what it is I'm talking about. So when you're dealing with different attachment styles with people, let's just say secure attachment, their emotional intensity tends to be very flat. It's not going to one extreme or another. They're not overly positive. They're also not overly negative. And this is actually a good thing because this stability does allow for internal peace and internal growth while at the same time creating a form of security, which I've talked about in past videos being the number one thing that people need long-term in order for a relationship to survive. When it comes to individuals that are anxious, you see a very different aspect of breakdowns. Anxious people don't tend to go to one extreme or another, but they do tend to be sporadic. In other words, predictably sporadic. Some days are good, some days are bad. It's not to say that these individuals um, aren't individuals at all, all and aren't prone to be empathetic. It just means that the form of their stability usually comes from an external source, external validation. And that's an important key factor to understand, especially for most of you that tend to come to my channel tend to be anxiously attached. Those individuals that are watching this need to understand that this emotional up and down wave is normal given that attachment style, but it's also important for us to understand where this wave comes from and how we as anxiously attached can move to better ourselves. Fearful avoidance tend to follow a very similar dilemma, except their emotions tend to be amplified and tend to be further apart. So where an anxiously attached from one day to the next can be very excited and very depressed, an anxiously attached style tends to go for longer spurts. And this is an over-representation, obviously, but theirs tend to last closer to weeks where for weeks they might feel a very big high and then for weeks they might feel a very big low. But it doesn't happen instantly. Instead, it happens as a wave, a constant stimulation that will shift the way they see the world. It will shift the way they interpret their partners. Last but not least is the uh, dismissive avoidance, which as you can see, tend to be very linear. Unlike the other attachment styles, they tend to be very strict in their regiment. And usually these jumps in either being highly emotional or highly depressed tend to be sparked from some kind of trigger. What that trigger here is happens to vary. A trigger can be something as simple as a death in the family or being sparked of a specific emotion or specific event that's happened in their lives. The idea is that dismissives tend to go for even longer spurts of the highs and even longer spurts for the lows, but they themselves don't happen to see an issue with it. Instead, what they tend to do is they tend to internalize a lot of their validation, which is why when you initially start dating an avoidant, they might not necessarily be interested right away and then all all of a sudden they shoot up and say, I'm in love with you. Um, I don't want to be with you. This is my soulmate. This is the person I see myself marrying. And then all of a sudden they get hit with another trigger and then I no longer love you. I no longer feel things for you. Why don't you just get over it? We were only dating a couple of months. This idea gives some perspective, some visual representation of what dismissive avoidance tend to go through. So the question becomes, how do different attachment styles interact with one another? Well, I deal with attachments such as I would a gravitational pull. Two different bodies, two different interpretations, each one of them has an impact on another. So in the case of a secure attachment, what you'll notice is that these lines have tended to switch with one another, but they don't tend to be very sporadic. They tend to be very spread out. And this is a normal thing. 
individuals will have hard days, they will have good days, but they don't tend to stay there if they're secure. If you happen to find two individuals that are secure, they have a good grounding, a good foundation on what they interpret their value system to be. It's not to say that these individuals are going to stick together for life. It's basically just stating that these individuals have a good and healthy understanding of what their limitations are, and most importantly, the limitations of their partner. And they tend to balance one another. They tend to zigzag. One person might be more emotional than the next one day to the other, but this is very spread out. And this is where you might occasionally get an argument once every couple of months or once every couple of years it isn't a foundation of the relationship and as we can see it's a very stable and predictable line to be associated with but what happens when we introduce another attachment style to the secure mindset well something very interesting happens if we happen to take someone who's anxious for example and happen to put them with the secure what you'll actually notice is that over time the emotional waves become less and less intense this is actually done on purpose because the secure person has a good foundation of who they are they have a good foundation of their value system and as such they aren't triggered by the anxious person going up and down in their emotions. In fact, that balancing act has the exact opposite effect. It eases the person with high anxiety down to mirror the person with a secure attachment style. And I know a lot of you that happen to have an anxious attachment style who have dated secure people will see this and will say, well, of course, I. how did I not see this before? It's funny when we're visually represented the actual stimulation and what it actually does over time and we start understanding better why it is it's so important to find a partner that understands us why secure partners more than anything else have an ability to ease up the tension of external factors as well as the tension of a relationship with fearful avoidance you have a very similar dilemma where all of a sudden the waves over time become more less and less intense and less and less preoccupied. What does this look like? This looks like a secure attachment style in the making. In many aspects, that's exactly what's happening. The person of security is offering this other individual an ability to relax, an ability to not constantly be on a consistent high. What does tend to happen in some cases is that fearful avoidance will jump ship on the relationship when they feel that first wave of depression, that first wave of anxiety, but that isn't necessarily always the case. If a fearful can stick with the relationship with a secure and fight the urge of being bored in the relationship, which is the number one complaint I do hear from individuals that happen to date someone who's secure, they can actually move and become less and less intense over time. Dismissive avoidance also follow a similar pattern, but like their counterparts, or unlike their counterparts, their drop in interest usually is sparked by a trigger. So that trigger might not necessarily be directly associated with the secure attachment style. That trigger might be an external factor, but that external factor has an immediate impact on how the dismissive avoidance sees the individual that's secure. In most cases, secure individuals who see the sudden drop will tend to um, dump or exit the relationship because they understand what their value it is that they're bringing. If the dismissive avoidant can fight these urges during these dips to express negative traits or to be critical of the secure attachment style, the securely attached will help in turn by bringing down the intensity of these waves and these triggers will become less and less frequent. At the same time, Individuals that are dismissive do have an uphill battle because dismissives don't tend to be self-critical. They don't tend to be self-aware. The few that are do do a very good job at understanding when they're feeling triggered, but they have no idea why they're feeling this particular trigger. It's up to a combination of therapy as well as having proper support to pull these people out of this mindset and to get them understanding that this isn't a way of living a life, let alone a relationship. Something interesting happens when we start mixing in with the insecure attachment style, specifically fearful and anxious. What you'll notice is that the fearful attachment style has the exact opposite effect that the secure had, where the intensity of the anxiously preoccupied individual tends to increase in that relationship. And the main reason is that the anxious individual is constantly looking for external gratification. That external gratification can be felt on a low and it can be felt on a high. And what you'll actually notice here is that the anxiously attached and the fearful tend to mirror one another in the opposite extreme. So when a fearful is feeling down, the anxious is feeling high. When the anxious is feeling 
uh, high, the fearful is fearing low. This is a mirroring pattern. And what will happen is that these waves will become more and more intense with time if we don't happen to stop it at its source, or at the very least, we don't happen to address these key triggers that keep sparking these kind of responses. There's a number of things that cause this kind of emotional outburst in individuals, but the biggest one has to do with insecurity. Insecurity that's usually projected by both parties onto the other. Unfortunately, because there isn't a secure attachment style in this equation, the balancing act doesn't tend to happen. In fact, it's not that far in between where you happen to see someone who is anxious turn into a fearful after such relationships or after they have experienced such relationships. Fearfuls and fearfuls have an interesting dynamic because, like I mentioned, they tend to mirror one another. And what ends up happening here is you have an effect where all of a sudden the attachment styles tend to be the exact opposite of one another. There are times where they pull, there's times where they push. And this dynamic, believe it or not, can go on for years with both individuals believing that this is a normal relationship, that this is how we're supposed to interact with our partners. When do breakups happen when two fearfuls are connected or together in a relationship? More than likely, some kind of intense trauma that throws off this wave balance. So all of a sudden, the person that should be feeling a high is feeling a low, and they're both feeling low, and they all of a sudden can't recover from it, and they turn into a spiral. This is where you get aspects of emotional cheating, for example, or relationships ending abruptly without explanation. And this is a common practice for individuals that are dating a fearful avoidant that happen to be a fearful avoidant, which is why it's so important for us to understand our limitations and us to understand what our trauma is, what our triggers are, so we can slowly become more secure with time. When a fearful dates an avoidant, we have a bit of a paradox in the sense that the idea is that these waves will overlap with good time. And when they do overlap, both parties feel like they're on a high. Both of them feel they've found, quote, the one. But they also simultaneously tend to downfall at the same time, usually with the same triggers. The main difference is fearful avoidance hit that down point over time and dismissives hit it instantaneously, which leaves a lot of confusion, especially from the fearful avoidant when that relationship ends, because when it ends and some time has passed, the fearful avoidant will tend to look back and will say, this is the one I got away. And of course, the dismissive by that point has emotionally shut off and has completely dismissed the relationship as being non-existent. This creates an interesting dynamic because once a relationship fails for a fearful avoidant who's dated a dismissive avoidant, they tend to more than likely start becoming self-aware and tend to start dealing with the insecurities versus a dismissive avoidant who will stay in the exact same path that they've always felt, which is they just turn themselves off emotionally. This doesn't necessarily mean that it's like this in 100% of cases, but it does provide a visual representation on why these types of relationships are so traumatic for individuals that happen to be dating a dismissive avoidant. Anxious with anxious tends to follow the same routines as a fearful to fearful with a couple of exceptions. The first is that the outbursts and the emotions aren't as intense and the outbursts aren't as long. So it can literally go from one day to the next. One day I'm feeling good, the other day I'm feeling bad. And it's all about understanding my limitations and understanding the dynamics. Progressively, I would hope that one or both of these individuals will become secure over time. At the same time, um, that anxiously attached notion of things will cause both individuals to tend to mirror one another. And it's not that uncommon where you hear two anxiously attached individuals will stay years in a relationship until that balance is thrown off. And like I mentioned with the fearful dynamics, where a fearful dates a fearful, if a trigger causes one person to mirror the other, um, one for one, it can cause all different types of dilemmas, especially when both people are feeling low. Avoidant and avoidance aren't relationships that tend to last very long. Um, the main reason is exactly what you're seeing on the screen. It's very easy for an avoidant to mirror each other in both extremes. So if it's a case where one of them is feeling a high, they might both feel a high, but if they're definitely feeling a low, they won't project or they won't invest the same level of interest that's required in order to keep the relationship going. This is why avoidance 
don't tend to be very long-term with other avoidants, and they tend to be more closely attuned for the fearfuls or, more importantly, the anxious attachment styles. And that leads much to our conclusion. Now, I know that this is a new way of portraying information. I know this is a new way of getting visual representation. But my hope here is that it provides you with some level of understanding of how attachment styles interact with one another. If it's a case where you guys like this presentation, I will go ahead and create another one like it in the future. But until then, I wanted to provide this representation just to give you guys some visuals on what it is to date different attachment styles and what kind of impact they have on one another. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. If you did, I would ask that you hit the thumbs up icon below. For those of you that haven't subscribed, I would highly recommend that you do. And of course, if you are interested in getting one-on-one -on -one coaching, information can be found on my website at www.thetruthoflove.net, or you can send me an email at clutch.tol at gmail.com. With that said, this is Clutch, signing off.